So yeah, in this final, I guess, half hour, 25 minutes, um, we have some questions for you generally as a community um, um, that we sort of started talking about last workshop and we're gonna sort of interweave into that. Um, our thoughts on this um, prompts for you, for you guys as well. So our first question, I mean, this is sort of broadly what we've been talking about in the whole workshop and the last workshop, but you know, what factors are hindering progress in land data assimilation and what are the next steps to address these challenges? So we've all been uh, working on that. And we just came up with a list that we've sort of uh, got in our minds from this and the last workshop uh, that I've put here. Um, a lot of chat, chatter about um, better characterizing observation and model errors, how we do that. There are established methods, at least in, in my sort of carbon cycle parameter estimation world, we, we typically haven't really worked on that yet, um, especially sort of covariances. Um, you know, we had the talk from Ken talking about um, underlying spatial and temporal error structures due to PFT maps as well. All this kind of thing falls into that. That second point of, of how we handle biased observations also is, is, I guess, has obviously strong overlap with the first. Uh, so that's, thing, that's something that comes up a lot, it seems. Um, one thing that's come up in some conversations, obviously it's more focused for the carbon cycle folks, is trying to initialize carbon stocks. That was talked about in one of the poster sessions. Um, ensemble generation comes up um, a lot. Um, those had a, a number of different talks that have referenced that. Um, we've talked quite a bit, we had a talk and a breakout group on sort of using data assimilation for better modeling disturbance and human activities, the types of processes that we're trying to implement into models currently, um, but as, as mentioned, don't necessarily have a lot of data for or, or process understanding. Um, we had a whole day on this on machine using, using machine learning AI methods uh, in combination with data assimilation methods, lots of questions around that, I think, still in the community. Um, you know, what is the overlap, how, how that can be used? Um, and there's been talks about, you know, model into comparisons, calibrated model MIPS, um, and Ellen just mentioned, you know, the sensitivity analyses as well. Um, so we just wanted to pause at this point and say two things. One is that, some of these things we, we sort of recognize people are still working on and they might not want to sort of discuss anything particularly yet. Um, and that maybe, you know, in, in, in upcoming workshops, we, we're planning on trying to do this virtual workshop every year, we can continue to have presentations um, on some of these topics and, you know, maybe more in-depth discussions arise from that. But some of these topics, you know, are generating a lot of discussion already. And because, you know, we're trying to balance discussion and presentation and talks, um, we don't have time for full discussions on those topics. And therefore, we're thinking that we might follow up, um, for example, on maybe ensemble generation or better characterizing observation and model errors with very short one off town hall discussions to basically just continue the discussions that are ongoing. Within, within this workshop. Um, so those are the sort of thoughts we have on, on how to continue activities in those areas. But are there any other topics that you all felt came up during the two workshops that um, we haven't listed here? Um, and you could put that in the chat or, or speak up, raise your hand, or if you just wanna think on that um, and let us know, we will be doing a, a post-workshop survey. I can't see many people with my screen shared, so. Tris, you were talking about a digital twin. You know, with the other. Uh, yeah, well, I'm here. Um, yeah, I see. Um, I was saying that I was surprised there hadn't been much mention of digital twins um, in uh, this uh, group. Uh, and that might be something we would talk about in the future. Um, I don't know if that is because um, 
there's a bias in Europe towards that. And so I see digital twin, the, the, the phrase digital twin occurring all the time. Um, and perhaps it's not a familiar thing. Um, but yeah, it's something we could definitely discuss in the future. What is a digital twin? Um, yeah, good question. Um, mm -hmm. I, I actually think it's very poorly defined. Um, but the essence seems to be um, models of the real world um, that represent processes um, to a very high level of detail and which are able to be interrogated by non-experts. Um, uh, and um, I don't think there are any kind of real examples of those things at the moment, but, but it's clear, I think, that there's a role for data assimilation in that um and uh, uh or on the flip side you know i think if us we as a community don't get involved in that you know we could get left behind because it's certainly being um the space is becoming very crowded with machine learning uh, folks right ken asked the question you know are we are we going to discuss these topics now just new topics Given we, we just have about 20 minutes left, um, we weren't thinking we'd have an in-depth discussion on any one of these topics, but if anyone was thinking, you know, that it, they did want to have a discussion on these topics or to potentially start a collaborative study, et cetera, to, yeah, to let us know. Any, any thoughts on that? Ken, did, were you thinking of anything? MIPS being, yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna, I, you know, things like Misty MIP have helped, in my opinion, quite a bit it makes people talk together, share methods, share data formats, makes things much more translatable from group to group. I don't know, you know, what particular MIP might be, <laughs> wise, but we've got a big group. And so mm -hmm. a group to encourage progress. I think MIPs are an interesting idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I very much agree with that. Uh, statement, Ken. Um, what I think we need, of course, is somebody to step up and volunteers <laughs> agree to agree to do that. Um, and um, I, I guess the thing I would uh, stress to um, uh, to the audience is, if you're an early career researcher, it is a really good way of staking your name on a paper that's probably going to get extremely well. Uh, cited and there are lots of people whose careers have been you know jump started by contributing to MIPS and I, I you know I, I'm fairly sure I'm not saying anything outrageous when I say that the the, the working group and AIMS would be happy to support uh, those activities so I, I guess if you are an ECR and you are interested in doing something like that get in touch and we can uh, we can definitely discuss yeah definitely yeah, I agree. I would just want to make a parallel with the transcom inversion community, how it started. Yeah. And uh, basically, it remained alive and for a long time because there were some intercomparisons, uh, like Ken has suggested, some groups activity, which I would more than welcome. One thing that make it work is that there was initially some funding to someone. And yep. um, international raise uh, of funding to Kevin Gurney that did then put a lot of energy to gather the group and make a type of me point of comparison. Okay. I think uh, that can be maybe fought by your steering committee whether, yeah, it could have a bit of help to support a young, and I would definitely support a young researcher to take in charge, push forward. Yeah. And and I've seen and a last comment. I think this community is very diverse and they probably have very, very different uh, problems. Although we all call land data assimilation, but it's very I feel it's different from numerical weather prediction than calibration of model parameters. Katie mm -hmm. Schrodinger's paper with simple model to compare different toys, uh, different approaches was nice, but it was still with a very simple model. It could be done for parameter optimization. There is a lot of things that can be done. And I guess on the land data assimilation for state optimization to predictions, 
It's also a, 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 an area that I'm less aware of, but there is also potentially some intercomparison. So yeah. I will tend to focus. And uh, for example, what Ken was proposing to prepare some error correlations by regions, country in space and time from current uh, state of the art models, like the global land surface model, is, an, is a question. But if you refine it, it's easier. Yeah. OK. Yeah. That's useful to know about the Transcom community. For those who don't know, Transcom, I think I'm getting this right, is a, is a community of atmospheric conversion folks. Is that right? Yes, yeah. it's, uh, atmospheric CO2 inversions. Uh, so it's data simulation, but uh, not optimizing parameter of a model, just surface fluxes that comes from a prior surface flux estimate. But it's okay. an important okay. problem. Yeah. And that's there's been a long running community sort of effort of intercomparing comparing uh, those different inversions. So. Um, but what made it uh, sustainable last, a uh, longing last, is that there were some experiments. Uh, right. Things to work on. Yeah, with some initial funding. Yeah. So I mean, we're we're pretty international community here, um, and so um, you know we all have opportunities to explore different so sources of funding. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to move on to the next slide, which is how we can help you with this. But if, if anyone has um, other topics, you know, uh, either topics for specific model intercomparisons or specific collaborative studies, and we already have one potentially in the works um, focused on the Arctic ecosystems, which is great. But if anyone you know, has the more ideas other than what's just been said and what's in the chat, um, please do let us know, or there are other topics, very specific technical topics that you want to talk about. Yeah, let us know. Um, and then, you know, how can we help basically as our AIMS land data simulation working group or the land data simulation community at large? And, um, you know, this is something we sort of presented last year. Um, our vision, you know, of building this community that is broad um, across all different types of land modeling groups. And obviously sometimes our problems will be very specific to our specific field. And sometimes we'll be able to really hopefully learn from other sort of uh, specialized groups within the land data simulation community. But we, you know, we're sort of leading this at the moment from this working group, leading this workshop, but we'd really love for it to be a bottom up grassroots thing. We, we're not trying to dictate anything or push anyone to do anything. Um, we have sort of focused it around uh, dealing with technical DA challenges, especially in relation to large scale problems, large models, you know, lots of observations and that kind of thing. Um, but we want to, we really want to help you do what you'd already like to do. You know, so Clara, you were, you were talking about um, you've been thinking about ways of, of generating ensembles, et cetera. And if you'd like to discuss with others or start a little collaborative study, we, we're just here to offer sort of organization, I guess, and resources. Um, and so what we've already done in this last year, I think most of the time that we've spent, as, as we mentioned in introduction, is we've set up this website. We're going to continue to build it. We are going to figure out a way that we can um, allow access to other people to add things like papers, uh, events, et cetera, to that website. Um, we're just you know, still building that, but have a look again and, and see whether that's um, something that's useful for you. We have a list serve, there are 106 people joined. There's a link to join on, um, on the website. Um, and that whole website is, is attached to a GitHub account, which could potentially be used for some of these more collaborative studies, uh, you know, to deposit data, et cetera. Um, and as I just mentioned, you know, we sort of want to be here to help organize meetings, um, facilitate connections and introductions, etc. Um, we will be putting a bit of all of this in a post workshop survey, and we'd love to hear from you on what you would like. Um, so please, please take a look at that when it comes, hopefully soon. Um, and what's happening? Yeah, just an, a quick note on the website and listserv, people have been using, using the listserv to share jobs in particular. Uh, it would be great if people also shared papers. Um, and uh, that's something that the Fluxnet uh, listserv is used for often. I like that. 
And people sometimes also ask, um, you know, do you have papers on this particular topic? Um, and so please, please go ahead and do that. Like start today. You have a paper that's coming out, email the list so. Um, so that would be great. Also any conference sessions, et cetera. Um, and definitely, you know, can be used to advertise more sort of community level meetings uh, focused around some of these discussions. Um, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, yeah, thinking about how we can provide access. Um, we'd love to help facilitate a LAN DA early career researcher network. Um, a couple of you just mentioned you'd be interested in helping develop the training materials, but there's other things that would, could be useful um, for you to sort of gather as, a, as your own early career researcher network. I think I've just admitted to myself that I'm not an early career researcher anymore. Um, and so if you'd be interested in, in getting involved in helping build that, please let us know. Um, other things that we've talked about over time have been um, having an online sort of forum on the website to, you know, people can post questions on there rather than the listserv. Um, if you think you might be interested in that or know a good way to do it, let us know. Um, and another thing, maybe it's sort of a, a more um, public um, or at least, you know, for members of the community to be able to see who else is in the community, who else is signed up to the listserv, for example, so you can, you know, a bit like our participant list that we have in the program, see who's there and where they are and what their contact details are. So this is things that we're working on, um, but um, yeah, just wanted to highlight all of that to you, but also, you know, mention that we want to hear from you. Um, I don't know whether anyone else in the working group wants to say anything else at this point. Um, um, I, so I will say one thing, we will, be, we will be probably following up with emailing the community about specific sort of small town hall discussions to potentially continue some of the discussions from this workshop. So look out for that. And, um, you know, we'll try and obviously make it at a time that many people can join, most people can join. Um, but any other sort of volunteers for bigger events, more collaborative studies, longer running activities. Um, yeah, please, please let us know. Okay, well, we'll finish um, a little bit early. Um, but thank you, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you all again at some point soon, hopefully in person at some point, but um, ongoing collaborations and discussions in this area for sure. Yeah. Bye everybody. <laughs> <laughs>